I am Jennifer Sisney, and I am Kodak's chief blogger and senior social media manager. I am in a conference room uh, a few steps away from my desk here at Kodak headquarters in snowy Rochester, New York. Well, it's uh, marvelous to have you with us, uh, Jenny. Thank you for giving up your time. Let's get off with a question around uh, what do you actually do then day to day? <laughs> I get that. Well, usually for the first question is, how did you become chief blogger? But um, so even though my title is chief blogger, I'm not writing every single blog post. Uh, it's a lot more of the social media manager part of the job. I, I've kept the chief blogger part because it's it's a great title. I love having that on my business card. But um, I kind of work like a newspaper editor where I am managing all the different people throughout the company that are contributing to our social media efforts. So if you went to our blog, you're going to see blog posts from um, product managers, PR people, marketing people, even um, IT folks write blog posts for us because it's not always just, oh, here's a Kodak camera, the Kodak camera has this. It's how people are taking pictures. It's uh, stories about photography, about video, how-tos, tics, trips and <laughs> tips and tricks. And uh, you know, we have one guy, he'll go on vacation to Disneyland and come back and share his tips on how to get really great pictures of his kids when he's on vacation. So I'm always looking for stories internally, uh, whether we're coming out with a new product or we're going to be at an event. And then also paying attention to what's going on externally, like if um, Valentine's Day is coming up here in the States, so should we be talking about uh, Valentine's photo cards or um, great uh, project ideas to do with your kids on Valentine's Day? So that's kind of my day-to-day -day role. So you touched on that there's plenty of people within Kodak actually creating content there, and you know that was something I'd love to explore with you. Around the numbers, really, I know you got like four or five blogs specifically, but give us a, uh, the idea about how many people are actually creating okay. content for you. Right, that's a, that's a great question because our core team is pretty small. It's pretty much me and our chief listener. But when you factor in everybody that contributes, uh, we have we have three blogs, and I would say we've had over over 150 people contribute at some time. Maybe some maybe some people will write one blog post um, because they have one story and they don't write another one. And then we have people that might contribute uh, on a regular basis, uh, and then when you count in our Facebook pages, Twitter handles, YouTube channels. We have about 40 people worldwide that represent Kodak, whether it's out on a Twitter handle like Kodak Kiosk or Kodak UK uh, or our admins of a Facebook page like the Kodak Germany Facebook fan page. Okay, so was there a process then, because there's so many people, is there a process of education internally around not just uh, telling people that these platforms exist and they can communicate through them, but also how to do that as well. Yeah, so what usually happens is somebody will, will raise their hand and say, you know, I think we should have a Twitter handle for our printers, our inkjet printers. And so that's when I will sit down with them and share with them some guidelines, uh, best practices, and um, really kind of hands-on walk them through the process. The thing that's great is a lot of times it's already somebody that's already on Twitter that has an interest in it. That's the best thing is when you have somebody in the company that is uh, a big proponent of their business but also has an interest in social media, that's the perfect combination. I would never go to someone, to a business unit or to a region and say, you need to have a Twitter account and you should just start one if they didn't believe in it because if you don't get Twitter and you don't believe in in what it can do then it you're that's not a recipe for success of course so how do you manage then flip that how do you manage when um, there's in a team no one on Twitter no one has written a blog post before so what's the process then about enabling them to do that 
if you mean like if there's a business unit and they're not, well, that's usually when I step in and I will, you know, provide me the information, um, you know, bulleted list, what's happening, are you going to be at this event, um, and I'll write the blog post. So I travel a lot. I go to trade shows. I go to um, event sponsorships, and, and I will cover it, or I'll tweet it through my Twitter handle. Okay, cool, cool. So um, tell us a little about a little bit about the content that you create uh, through the channels there, because I know you got some really cool podcast series. And like I said, you before just before the interview, where I was watching you create a little little <laughs> bookmarking thing, and also I think it was your dog as well about dog yeah. photography, which is really cool. So what's what's the logistics of that? Do you do it all to, to get other people to help you from next to companies, and what's what's the idea behind those? The the primary means of content is it, it's mostly created here uh, because it's great to show that. We use our products. We um, have a passion for what we do, and so obviously on Twitter, on Facebook, we we talk about our products, what we come out with, firmware upgrades. But a, a lot of it is also, you know, interesting stories on using our products, and, and sometimes it's not even our products. We'll talk about just photography in general, and it's not product specific. Um, sometimes people will say. Oh, but I have this camera. Is that okay? It's like you know, just take pictures, print it on Kodak paper, then, <laughs> um, because uh, we want to be, um, we want to add value to our viewers, not just be constantly talking about ourselves, you know, our products. We want to give them information that's going to be valuable to them, whether it's something like dog photography or which is not taking pictures of dogs, that is attaching a camera to your dog and letting him take pictures, which my poor pug was subjected to. Um, you know, how to take better firework, fireworks pictures. You know, some people ask, how, how does that factor back to your business? Well, it's, it's adding value to our customers, and then you hope in turn that, you know, they, they come back and you have some conversion, but you're just not going to engage people if all you talk about is yourself. Brilliant, and it's something we try to communicate to our clients a lot. You know, don't just broadcast mm -hmm. and talk about yourself. But let's you touched a little bit on it about how does that feed back then into the core business? How do you measure success in social media terms? Well, we do. That's why I brought on a chief listener because uh, I was doing all of that for a long time, for about four years. I was sort of creating and managing the content and measuring our results, and that is a lot of work, especially when uh, we pulled a number that there are three hundred thousand new mentions of Kodak a month. And that's a lot of conversation to watch online. So um, we hired a chief listener last spring, and she uses a tool called Radiant 6 to help us monitor the conversation. So uh, you can do things um, like whether how many impressions you get. Uh, for instance, we were at a, a print trade show last year in Cologne called IPEX, and we were able to see by measuring our, our media our mentions online that we had twice as many mentions on Twitter and blog posts as uh, our two major competitor competitors combined. Uh, so that's that's a great you know a, a measurement. But then there's always the question of can you connect it back to sales? And that that's always the challenge, especially when you have lots of partners and channels that you sell through. You know, how are you tracking, like, this tweet actually led to a sale over at this brick-and-mortar store? Uh, so you can do things like having maybe do a coupon code or, um, you know, uh, tracking sort of that when you set a goal, uh, it, you know, you, you want people to go and download this coupon or visit this site. You can track some of those numbers, and uh, using a tool like Radiant 6 uh, helps with that. So where would you um, put social media in terms of a strat strategic tool then? Is it a marketing or is it a business prospector, prospecting tool? Uh, kind of where do you put it in your brain so you can do this day in, day out? It, oh, it's all of those things. It's marketing, it's PR, it's support, it's, yeah, it's customer generation, especially when on our B2B side. 
Uh, a lot of people don't know that Kodak is like I think almost sixty percent a B two B business, and so in in that that case, uh, customer leads can be very important in social media. So it's it's really it's all of those things. We sit in the uh, the the CMO, the corporate marketing office, but um, we work very closely with PR and with product groups. One of the other things that a lot of people don't think about is taking the feedback that we get from customers and um, funneling that back into the product managers to improve our products. Uh, oh, wow. So Yeah. So because that was one of the questions I had about the specific impact of monitoring and tracking these conversations. So could you draw on a story then specifically? Oh, yeah. The, okay, go. <laughs> so about two years ago, we came out with our first pocket video camera, the ZI6. Or you guys say Z, ZI6. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it was very popular right off the bat. and But that was about the time when we started our first Twitter account. And immediately noticed people talking about the 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 poc that the ZI6 uh, on Twitter. So we really started tracking that and noticing people saying things like, "I love my ZI6, but when I'm recording at a trade show, the sound isn't great." Or I when I have other things plugged into my laptop, I can't fit it fit it fit the USB in. So we gathered all of those comments together and presented it to our product team and a year later we came out with the ZI8 which has an external microphone jack, a flexible USB arm, electronic stabiliza image stabilization, all these things that people were asking for. So we literally improved our product by listening to our customers. It's like the world's best biggest focus group. Um, Instead of having nine people sitting in a room somewhere behind a double mirror, uh, you are asking people that actually have the product and that use it, and and are out there. They're so passionate about it that they're talking about it on Twitter. It, and oh, and the funny thing is, is so we had the ZI6, the ZX1, and the ZI8, and we started noticing people say. I'm so confused with this naming system. What? what <laughs> why are they already at Z? Did I miss the A's? What are they going to come out with next? And so we uh, finally, the, the last straw was uh, one of the reporters at the Boston Globe wrote an article saying, I love the ZI8, but the name stinks. So we said, that's it. We are going, we need <laughs> to, to change this up. So we said, if you don't like the name, we want to know what you think our pocket video cameras should be called. And so we made it fun. We had a contest and we said, tweet us name suggestions, or you can go to the blog and leave a comment. And to, to make it fun, we'll pick a hundred of you that have submitted a name and we'll give you a ZI8. And if we pick your name, we will fly you to Las Vegas for CES, which is the world's largest consumer electronics show, to help us launch that pocket video camera. And so, um, wow, we got thousands <laughs> of entries and the names were, I, I mean, they were hilarious, they were creative, and we ended up picking, um, we like the name combo Play Sport, uh, but it was two guys. One guy submitted Play and one submitted Sport. So we had to fly them both to Las Vegas, <laughs> <laughs> and we gave them T-shirts. One said play, and one said sport, Brilliant. and they walked around together. And uh, we literally crowdsourced the name of our product through, through social media, and uh, I consider that a, a success. And for free, may I add? Yeah. <laughs> well, it did take, it did take some time, though. Hmm. I, I, we went through a lot of names, but... Yeah, it was uh... cool. Well, thank you for that story. That's, that's wicked. Uh, and you touched on where you sit in the in the kind of overall department as well. You sit in the chief marketing kind of thing. And as you know, we, we spoke to Jeff Hazlett uh, uh, some time ago. I know he's moved on now, but he was the chief marketing officer for you guys. And he talked about uh, the idea around broadcasting to narrow casting as a very important um, idea where social media fits with him in terms of the marketing 
kind of channels or the marketing routes. Uh, and he was very much uh, an advocate of just actually this this is all about P2P now. It's not B2B, B2C. It's kind of just person to person. Uh, and what I felt from him as well was this huge amount of permission that he'd been given to have a go at this social media, you know, from the top down. I don't know if you want to just say uh, something around, I don't know, the corporate governance of a, such a big organization such as Kodak, which has a huge amount of history and a legacy and a pedigree behind you guys. Uh, was it at a, a time where you remember when you started that you started to see corporate buy-in from top and, and how much freedom do you have as well? It all started four years ago with the first blog, Thousand Words blog. It was September 2006. And when we first came up with the idea, let's have a corporate uh, corporate blog, we thought, oh, there, there's going to be pushback. So how, how can we help uh, management understand what our goals are? And one of the most simple things that we did at that time was we mocked it up. We did a sample blog that has, was populated with sample blog posts that like, we went to people and said, we'd like you to write a blog post for this um, and showed them. Because when you just you tell management, oh, we're going to start a blog, immediately, they're, immediately their imaginations are going to run away with them. They're going to think we're going to be sharing corporate secrets. And, but when they saw what it was going to look like, it really helped set expectations. Um, and, and we had a plan all set up. We said, this is how we're going to moderate comments. This is our escalation plan. If anybody if leaves a comment that's inappropriate or is a crisis, this is how we're going to handle it. And so they really didn't have any, you know, we didn't leave any questions hanging. We had all our bases covered when we went to them with the proposal. Um, it also helps to benchmark and show what other companies are doing and um, just really having that plan in place uh, because I, I think too many people just go and say, we want to start a blog and immediately people freak out. Mm. And so do you guys at Kodak have a, a social media strategy written down? Oh, yes, yes. We have. We even have like a B2B social media strategy and our consumer strategy. Um, and that gets refreshed every year, and of course it changes. It's so funny to s you start it in January, and it doesn't look anything like that by the end of the year. Um, but yeah, you kind of look ahead, and you you look at your internal plans. Again, working very closely with your product managers and your marketing folks, um, and the, the the just what's going on in social media with customers. And yeah, we, we definitely have a, a strategy that we follow. Interesting. But you got to be flexible. <laughs> like you say, you know, these platforms changed uh, kind of not even uh, year to year now. It's more like month to month uh, sometimes, yeah. doesn't it, with the uh, new platforms popping up. And, and how often do you kind of sign up to things? Are you constantly signing up and having a play and always thinking, how can I use this? I do. I do try everything that that comes along I sign up really quick to get my username and but um, but really what it comes down to is no matter what tool it is the most important thing is to have um, a core set of guidelines so whether it's Facebook whether it's the next thing coming out um, we always adhere to being transparent adding value listening to the customer if you take uh, you take those those core set of values and apply them to whatever you do, um, that that's how you're going to have success, no matter what what might come along in social media. Brilliant. Two more questions. One I gotta ask, and uh, you know you referenced it right at the beginning. How would you become a chief blogger for Kodak? Oh, <laughs> well, I worked on Kodak.com uh, on our website and. At that time, 2006, they, when we said, let's, let's talk about having a corporate blog, people sort of looked around the room and said, anybody know anything about blogs? And that time, I don't, I don't think there, there weren't books, there weren't conferences yet, um, but I had been blogging uh, since, personally since 2000. And everybody knew about my blog because my dog's on it and everybody was reading it. And they said, Jenny has a blog. 
And I really, I started off just um, helping set those guidelines uh, and, and kind of mocking out what the blog would look like. And I was in the right place at the right time, really. Uh, I do have a, a bachelor's degree in PR, but my master's is in computer graphic design. So I guess maybe that combination of PR and, and computers was the right combo. And, and, uh, and then it grew, of course, from the blogs to adding in Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Foursquare. Um, but I think the key there is I had also been with Kodak at that, uh, since 98. So I was very familiar with our product line with our brand and I had uh, a lot of experience in social media because I think a lot of people discount the fact that there is a certain tone and protocol in social media. Um, you don't interrupt conversations, you don't uh, slam other people and I, a lot of people I think take that for granted and uh, I think finding somebody in a company that has that right combination of experience in both the brand and social media is, is really helpful. So let's wrap this up with a question about the future, uh, both personally and professionally. What, what are you guys kind of focusing on at the moment and in the next six months, what is on your work plan? Um, I think uh, w one big thing is really kind of harnessing the power of our customers. Uh, we talked a little bit about how we feature our own employees, about what they're doing with their cameras and video and photography and imaging, but our customers are doing a lot of really cool things too. And sometimes I'll find somebody that's doing something really creative like using his pocket video camera on a stick to chuck his gutters to see if they're, they need cleared out of leaves, uh, or people that are taping them to their snowboards. Uh, you know, featuring the really creative things that our customers are doing and um, kind of highlighting that and creating essentially brand ambassadors. And, and like you were talking before about narrow casting, really developing relationships with our customers. I mean, we already have a lot of that where I can go to a conference and people will show up at the booth that I've been tweeting with for months and I get to meet them in real life and I feel like almost like they're they're a friend but to them I'm I it Kodak isn't just a brand just one big you know brand it has people behind it it has Jenny the chief blogger and it has Deidre at Kios and it's really putting a face and people behind the brand very important well thank you very much for giving up your time Jenny it's been awesome to talk to you and thanks for giving your insights and and, uh, and the insight track of what you guys are doing well thanks for having me